Hello again and welcome to Pearl Magazine. During the Sino-Japanese War, treasure from the Palace Museum was scattered throughout the country. Palace Museum guardians escorted some of these collections to the south and the west, protecting them from damage. Leishan is in south-central Sichuan. This is where the world's biggest cliff statue sits. People have always admired the fact that the Leishan giant Buddha is both a mountain and a Buddha statue. It is at the meeting point of three rivers, Dadu, Qingyi, and Ming. The place became an ideal passageway for those transporting national treasures from the Forbidden City during the Sino-Japanese War. The six ancestral halls and one Buddhist temple there offered an excellent hiding spot. All seven repositories stood on either side of the river. The water transport is convenient for small boats, but large Japanese boats couldn't pass. The Dadu River blocked their mechanized troops from entering. Wang Lianchun was born in Angu Leishan. His hometown was a shelter for treasures moving south. After the Mukden incident in 1931, the Palace Museum began to wrap, number and load cultural relics into crates. Two years later, Japan invaded Shanghai Guan up north, and the museum decided to move the relics south. Soon after the Marco Polo Bridge incident, just outside Beijing, Shanghai was attacked. Not too far away, Nanjing, where the relics were stored, was in danger. The Palace Museum evacuated the collection to the west and south via three routes. On the southern route, 80 crates were shipped from Nanjing to Hankou, Changsha, Giyang, and then settled in Anshun. On the northern route, over 7,000 crates were shipped to MA by land. The middle route had the most relics. Over 9,300 crates were transported to Angu Town through the Yangtze River. Wang Lanchun was born in 1939 when the crates arrived in Angu Town via the Middle Route. As an uneducated farmer, he had only attended school for a few days. Some people say I am not educated. I only had 120 school hours. I was seven, eight years old when those relics were shipped out, so I knew something. Wang made a lot of money in business. In 2008, he decided to build this memorial hall himself to pay tribute to the Angu people's efforts at guarding the national treasures. I'm the only person left of my generation. I made the decision of building the memorial alone. My kids never approved it. It may be cliche to say, I came to this world with nothing and left this world with nothing. So what do we leave for the next generation? I always hope I can contribute to our society. Relics of the Forbidden City were stored in Angu for eight years. When Wang was young, he heard about how neighbors protected the treasure. But now few villagers know of these stories. I only heard of it, but I didn't see it in person. Emperor Qianlong's robe was stored in the Zhao Ancestral Hall. They hung it out. If there was no cooperation between local people and palace museum guardians, could they really preserve them with just a few staff? They couldn't even maintain order, not to mention take care of the artifacts. Wang says, thanks to the Angu people's help of dredging the waterways and hauling the treasures, those relics were successfully transported. After the victory of the Sino-Japanese War, Ma Heng, then director of the Palace Museum, awarded plaques to six ancestral halls that stored cultural relics. 
Angu people's actions of conserving cultural relics is similar to that of Confucius hiding books. Descendants of Confucius donated those books to the central government. Wang spent a long time finding this plaque. It is now displayed on the memorial, which has an interior area of less than 1,000 square meters. Outside, Wang bought these 10 bronze statues specifically to commemorate those who escorted the treasures moving south. Later generations all appreciate these statues. Who else will remember their ancestors over these years? Only me. Everything I did is for the good of all Chinese. I have tried my best for this project and for history. Uyang Ding Wu is the son of Uyang Daoda, who was in charge of moving the treasures south. Uyang Daoda was responsible for the route, which carried the most relics. He escorted them to Angu Shan. I was born here. My mom took us kids away under the bombings of Japanese. Leishan was called Jia Ding in ancient times. Uyang Ding Wu was born in Angu Leishan in 1940. Ding Wu says he only has a vague recollection of the treasures moving south. We were born here and experienced this, but we don't understand its significance. Actually, who knows what the treasures were? He didn't say. He was too busy. It is his personality that he doesn't like to promote himself. Uyang Daoda became a philosophy lecturer after graduating from Peking University. In 1923, he joined the committee to audit the imperial collections. After the Sino-Japanese War, Uyang Daoda was asked to keep the collection in Shanghai safe and then evacuate them to the West. He became the director of the Leishan office. He has a rich knowledge in treasures. He knows a lot about the collection of the Palace Museum. My father is an amazing guy. Uyang Daoda took the responsibility of guarding the treasures his whole life. He rarely mentioned this to his children. Until 10 years ago, Leishan villager Wang Lianchun contacted Uyang Dingwu through the Palace Museum. Uyang Daoda's script about his history was discovered. His family then learned of how their predecessors protected the collections. We were afraid of the rain when hanging them out. Also, some ants, insects and mice might damage them. I have this memory. My mom chasing out rats beside the crates. Me playing around her. Villagers never stole or took the artifacts away. Those treasures were from the central government. It was a great honor for this place. 82-year-old Uyang Dingwu and his sister Uyang Fu both wish more people knew the history of relics moving south. So, over 10 years ago, they started to donate their father's relics, part of which are displayed in Uyang Daoda's former house in Leishan. Those people are old now. For us, those aren't like money or valuables. They have historical value. Let more local people know that those collections were kept by him during those eight years. Patriotism, perseverance, devotion, not exaggerating, but it is indispensable. We need to get this history back. We can't forget and shouldn't forget. After the treasure left Leishan in 1946, many locals forgot about this chapter of history. Six ancestral halls and a Buddhist temple were demolished. Xiaotong River, which was used to ship relics, dried up. To familiarize new generations with this history, the Leishan government built a museum on the old site. 
Leishan is Heiyi's hometown. Born in the 1980s, he has been studying this history over the past 10 years. He thinks conserving this heritage helps more young people understand and remember the journey of cultural relics. The Palace Museum journey to the South is a cultural war joined by all citizens. It created a spirit of guarding here in the Palace Museum, the spirit of seeing cultural relics as our lives. When it comes to cultural relics, each Chinese person can relate to it. So I think displaying those relics here is the best way to memorize the history. More on the journey to protect China's national treasures after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Pearl Magazine. The journey that brought these precious artifacts to safety took 14 years and spanned tens of thousands of kilometers. Many of those overseeing this operation spent their entire lives protecting and preserving these treasures from the Palace Museum. Now their offspring are making sure these guardians are remembered by telling their stories. Chongqing in upstream Yangtze River was the first city to open to outside trade in western China. It was a shelter for cultural relics during the Sino-Japanese War. The Palace Museum shipped crates of artifacts here via the Yangtze River. They were secretly stored in the local government's private bank founded by a Swedish businessman. There is an apt Chinese saying, the journey here is harder than scaling the skies. Over 3,000 crates of relics had to be transported to the Anderson Bank via this stone ladder. In 2018, the Chongqing government renovated the bank and made it the first official memorial hall to commemorate the artifact's journey south. The growth of our younger generations is very important for our country and the people. The most crucial are their worldviews and values. Preserving our long history of Chinese civilization is important. We seek knowledge from ancient wisdom to better plan for our future. Mr. Ma Heng wrote this couplet in Chongqing during the war. He always leads the way. Over the eight years of the war, he stayed in Chongqing after getting the artifacts settled. 79-year-old Ma Simeng is the grandson of Ma Heng, the second-term director of the Palace Museum. Ma Heng oversaw the moving of the relics to the south after taking office in 1933. During this time, he brought his grandson, Ma Simeng, to all the different places he had to travel to while moving the palace treasure. National treasure, that's a symbol of Chinese civilization. His students received, transported, escorted, conserved, settled those cultural relics. But where would they settle them? He did site research, visiting Sichuan, Chongqing, and Lishan. He decided everything, whether it's too dry or too humid, whether there were rats or insects that could damage the relics, the surroundings and full custom. He checked everything. Inscriptions on drum-shaped stones are characters used widely in the Qin Dynasty and the Warring States period. Ma Heng has been keen on studying them since he was young. During the Sino-Japanese War, Ma Heng tried his best to protect and escort the largest drum-shaped stone to safety. He liked epigraphy since he was a child. He has been studying origins and involvement of Chinese characters his whole life. 
1946, many cultural relics were still in Chongqing. They hadn't been moved back to Nanjing. He came to Beijing first. His route is in the Palace Museum. After the war, Ma Heng escorted the relics back to the Forbidden City. He lived in Beijing until his passing in 1955. His grandson, Ma Simeng, started to sort out his grandfather's journals and research material during his retirement. He published them, hoping his grandfather's story of guarding the relics would live on. He was meticulous and cautious, was never a person who shied away or irresponsible. It seems my grandfather left me here to do this, giving my life more meaning. These things can be passed on. The Palace Museum's collection was moved all over the country. The fates of the guardians escorting them, as well as their families, were tied to the treasures. I think he decided it randomly if he was born in Erme, call him Ershan. If he's born in Jading, call him Jiasheng. We arrived in Nanjing, also named Jingling. So my name is Jingshan. My sister, born in Nanjing, is named Jiang Ning. My little brother was born in Beijing, also known as Yan, so he's called Yan Shan. Liang Jin Sheng's father, Liang Kuangzhong, escorted relics to Emei Shan on the northern route. He named his five children after the places the treasures passed through. They've known the Palace Museum well since they were young. We have been living a palace museum life. My sister went to a primary school related to the palace museum. I remember the palace museum staff's rigorous work attitude. I believe I would work there one day. The life of Liang's family has always been linked to cultural relics. After the war, Liang Jingsheng's grandparents, uncle and eldest brother transported national treasures to Taiwan, but his father stayed in Nanjing to take care of the relics. The family has been separated in two places for decades. As they are always on the move from Beijing to Nanjing, Nanjing to Shanghai, Nanjing to Wuhan, Chongqing, Palace Museum staff and their families are used to this. In 1948, we never thought they would have come back from Taiwan in a few days. So I didn't take it seriously. It wasn't until I didn't hear from them for decades that I felt the loss. In 1979, Liang Jingsheng was recruited to work at the Palace Museum as an engineering mason. He later became the chief curator of cultural relics. Liang retired in 2008 and became the museum's advisor. Before retiring, he suggested conducting a comprehensive inventory of cultural relics. After seven years, they audited more than 1.8 million artifacts. My great-grandparents created artwork for the Palace Museum. My grandfather took these things away, but my father brought them back. So it's my turn to sort them out here. It's an honor to do this. I think I haven't accomplished many things. Wouldn't it be better that we try our best to benefit future generations? Zhu Chuan Rong is a retired editor of the Palace Press. She assisted in sorting out materials of the Palace Museum. These photos are all about Palace Museum guardians and their families. Zhu says her uncle also helped move the cultural relics south, which is why she has an interest in the related history. They are my uncle's friends. They are devoted to their work. 
They didn't give it much thought. I sense that noble spirit and great sacrifice in it. Zhu has been sorting through the old materials, visiting descendants of palace museum guardians, and telling stories of the national treasures. She hopes the younger generations can learn from the sacrifices made by these unsung heroes. From their documentaries, I learned how people maintain their love of art and artifacts during difficult times, and how a person can still embrace good qualities when they are in trouble. The journey of bringing the relics to safety took over 10 years and spanned tens of thousands of kilometers. The Palace Museum guardians visited over a dozen cities to protect these cultural treasures from the damage of war. Escorting artifacts to the east and north to guarantee the treasure's return to the Palace Museum. The Guardians completed an incredible journey in order to safeguard the country's cultural heritage. That's Pearl Magazine for this week. Join us again, same time, next week. Bye for now.